Hello, my name is Steven Munitonis, the CEO and co-founder of Katsu Global. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Katsu bands and how they differ from a tourniquet or a blood pressure cuff. Now, when people hear about the Katsu bands and they see the Katsu bands and they see users actually put on the bands, they actually call them, mistakenly so, a cuff. They assume that when you put on the Katsu band, that is acting as a tourniquet. In other words, it's cutting off or occluding blood, arterial blood flow. So that means when people see this, they assume that it's a blood pressure cuff. Now, blood pressure cuff is much, much bigger. And we've all had our blood pressure taken. And you notice just by having the bands on, the band, the Katsu air band is much, much narrower. This is much wider. Also, that's very important. The air bladder inside is specially constructed. And when I inflate it, you'll see how this band actually inflates in an oval shape. When it's inflated in an oval shape, this means that the pressure on the arterial flow is only along the ridge. Whereas with the blood pressure cuff, this entire cuff pressurizes and it really squeezes the arm. We've all had our blood pressure taken and we know how tight that uh, pressure is. Now, when I put on the blood pressure cuff, it takes maybe 10, 15 seconds to inflate and for the healthcare professional to uh, check your blood pressure. In this particular case, you know how tight that is. You don't go much over 150 or 200 mmHg. Now with Katsu, we can go up to 400 mmHg or SKU. So you wonder, wait a second, on the blood pressure cuff, these tourniquets, you feel that intense squeeze, the arterial flow is occluded, so it's cut off, and it takes 10, 15 seconds, but the total amount of pressure is only 150, 200 mmHg. But on the Katsu side, we can go up to 400 mmHg or SKU and the blood continues. And why is that? It's because of the special construction of the bands. These are elastic, they are stretchable, and they have an air bladder that is oval shaped. And when that happens, even when you put the bands on at maximum pressure, 400 SKU or MAHG, blood continues into the arm. Whereas you put here half the pressure because of the construction of the band, blood is completely cut off. So let me demonstrate. I'm gonna turn on the band. I'm gonna put the bands on. I have one band on my right arm and I will leave the second band on without. I'm gonna take off the blood pressure cuff so you can see the difference. So now we have inside our units, there is a compressor, a circuit board, and a battery. The sound you may be hearing is that compressor pushing out air from the tubes into the air bladder inside. For our Bluetooth models, we don't have the tubes. It simply is uh, operating off of Bluetooth. And you can see here this ridge that I was talking about, this oval shape. So pressure is only along this ridge. So right now it's inflated. It'll be inflated for 30 seconds and it'll deflate. So when I have it on my arm, Blood goes into the arm or into the leg normally, and every 30 seconds, the band will deflate. It's deflated right now. You hear the sound. The compressor is actually pushing out air into the band, and now the band inside fills up with air. That's why we call this a band, not a cuff, a band, not a tourniquet. So now I have the band on my arm, it's inflated. And what happens is, if you can see my uh, front of my hand, 
you can see the veins being dilated. There's actually more blood is going, or same amount of blood is going in, but when it's inflated for 30 seconds, the blood coming back out is slowed down. That's why we call this a modification of the venous return. Venous return is the blood coming back from our veins to our torso. Arterial flow is the blood going from our torso out to our arms. So as the band inflates, you can see both a distension in the veins and then a difference in coloration between the band that does not have, or the arm that does not have a band and the uh, arm that has a band. There's much more blood engorged in all the very small capillaries in my right side versus my left side. So MHG and SKU, sometimes people ask us, are the same? Are they different? In fact, they're roughly the same. However, remember MMHG is a pressure within our vascular tissue. So it's inside pressure. And that is why you have your healthcare professional or yourself at home measure your blood pressure inside your vascular tissue. In Katsu's case, it's more of an external pressure pr pressing against your arm. So this, let's say 200 mmHg and this 200 mmHg is in fact, we use the same form of measurement. However, the impact on the blood flow is dramatically different. 200 mmHg with a blood pressure cuff cuts everything off, occludes. 200 mmHg on the Katsu uh, airbands is actually on the lower side of pressure. It's quite comfortable. Right now, I'm looking at the equipment. I'm at 245. 245 is perfect for me. It's not too high. It's, I started out low. And so this is quite comfortable. If I had this blood pressure cuff inflated, I could only withstand this for a few seconds at most, at most. This, I could half an hour, I could be, uh, I could be working out, I could be typing emails, I could be walking my dog. So 200 here, 200 here, do not equal the same impact on the blood circulation. To demonstrate this difference between 200 mmHg here and 200 mmH on the Katsu airbands, we're gonna use a pulse oximeter in order to demonstrate. Pulse oximeter, many of you have used this if you've gone to the doctor's office or gone to a hospital and you put it on your ring finger usually, or you can put it on any finger, and it actually has a little laser light inside and it actually measures the blood flow in your fingertip. Uh, there, it can measure your uh, pulse, how many beat, heartbeats per minute you have. It could actually measure your um, uh, perfusion index. It can actually also estimate your, um, how many breaths you're taking a minute or your respiratory rate and a variety of other uh, factors that we have in here. But for the sake of uh, argument here, if I had 200 mmHg on my hand, not only would I see actually a very good, a very healthy heart rate, I would also see an increase SpO2 or oxygen saturation. Oxygen saturation is the amount of oxygen in the blood in your fingertip. When the blood comes out of the heart, because our heart is right next to our lungs, it is what we call fully oxygenated. So the blood coming out of my heart is fully oxygenated. It carries a significant amount of blood. And it travels throughout my body. And as we get older, as we become less fit, as we become more sedentary, then the oxygenated blood in our fingertip falls. If it falls, you know, a few percent, that's normal. If it falls several percent, we want to look at it. If it falls in the, what we call 80%, then that is something that your healthcare professionals will then advise you on. So the uh, oxygen saturation is measured 
in percentage. So if I'm extraordinarily healthy or I'm a young child, I'm very fit, then I have 100% oxygenation or 100% SpO2 of, in the blood coming out of my heart. And I would actually have 100% of oxygenation at my fingertips also. Most people, are, most adults are not that um, vascularly healthy. So there is a small uh, decline. Uh, 96, 97, 98% is good. But what we see with katsu is a very interesting phenomenon. And that phenomenon is, and I've been using um, katsu now for, uh, let's see, six or seven minutes. And what is happening, I'm gonna take this stand off, it's a little uncomfortable, is that my SpO2, my oxygen saturation, actually is increasing as the blood is being modified the venous return is being modified. It's slowed down because I have more blood in this arm versus this arm. And so we often use the uh, uh, Massimo uh, finger pulse oximeter in order to measure the effects of katsu. Okay, we're gonna do a little test and I'm gonna use the pulse oximeter, the blood pressure cuff and the katsu air bands to demonstrate this phenomenon, how when you put the bands on at the same amount of pressure that there are two completely different uh, outcomes on one arm versus the other arm, or we'll even test the same arm. So in this case, I have put the um, Katsu unit to 200 SKU, SKU equivalent of MMHG. And we're going to turn it on so this band is now inflating to 200 mmHg. You'll, you'll see later when we put on the blood pressure cuff at 200 mmHg, everything stops. It's much too tight. At 200 SKU or mmHg, it is quite comfortable to me. Some of you, it might be on the tight side. Some of you, it might be on the low side. Everybody is different. So I have this band on in the constant mode because we wanna compare apples to apples. So this will be, quote, the constant. It doesn't fluctuate like the katsu cycle mode. So we'll have this at the constant of 200 mmHg. And we have this currently at 200 SKU or 200 mmHg. So I'm gonna use this uh, pulse oximeter. I'm gonna put it on my finger it takes a few seconds to register and it's going now. Okay, so very interesting here. Uh, it's at 98% oxygen saturation. We have a pulse that is going and oxygen saturation that is sufficiently high. When healthcare professionals think, wait a second, this is at 200 MMHG, how can this be? How can we have 97, 98 uh, oxygen saturation with a 70, roughly 70 to 72 heartbeat per minute being registered in real time with a Massimo finger pulse oximeter? The reason why is this band does not occlude arterial flow. It does not occlude arterial flow. It is not a blood pressure cuff. It is not a tourniquet. It is constructed very specifically to allow arterial flow to go into the arm and to modify or slow down the venous return every 30 seconds and we do it at a progressive rate. Okay, we showed Katsu air bands inflated to 200 mmHg or SKU and now we're gonna actually do a blood pressure cuff at a same or similar uh, blood pressure reading and see what happens. Turn on this commercial unit. And it's starting to inflate. It's getting tighter and tighter. Now it's over 100, over 150. It's getting uncomfortably tight. And I'll let this go. Show you here. and it's at 175 mmHg. 
you can see the oxygen saturation is down to 93, whereas with the katsu was at 98, 99%. In conclusion, we have demonstrated and shown and explained the difference between a blood pressure cuff or tourniquet and the katsu airbands. The blood pressure cuff was meant to measure the blood pressure within your vascular tissue. A tourniquet is used for surgery, for accidents, etc., where you have a severe wound and you want to stop the blood to be escaping from the body. This is why BFR companies have to measure the tightness of this by limb occlusion pressure. With katsu, there is no need for limb occlusion pressure because there is no occlusion. Have this extremely tight, very uncomfortable. We have to limit the amount of pressure and that is measured by limb occlusion pressure. On the cuts air bands, what we have is no occlusion, therefore we don't measure limb occlusion pressure, and blood is going in normally and is being modified every 30 seconds as the band inflates and deflates. So this is why a tourniquet, a blood pressure cuff, is dramatically different in construction, in purpose, and in functionality than the katsu airbands.